Good morning. Good morning, ladies. How are you this morning? Good morning. I pray that everyone is having a blessed morning. Happy Friday. I am so excited. I almost wasn't going to be able to make it this morning. Good morning, Derek. How are you, sweetie? I almost wasn't going to be able to make it in this morning because the enemy was like trying to do everything in his power to stop me from getting on this morning. But I'm thankful that we are here and we are on 24 minutes late, but we are here. Amen. Just forgive me for getting on here late amen this morning today's topic is gonna be called don't let your enemies fool you amen don't let your enemies fool you how many of you guys have had your enemies try to fool you how many of you guys had your enemies try to play you out how many of you guys have just had so many different things going on this week if you have you are not the only one believe me we all go through things every single day every single day is a struggle every single day we're you know going through something new Every single day, God is trying to teach us something different. Amen. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is not only about, you know, not letting your enemies fool you, but we're also going to be talking about um, happiness and how happiness is a choice. Amen. And while you guys are there, just give me one second. I'm just going to be getting my little instrumental on. Amen. Because sometimes I just like the instrumental is more like, you know, calming and relaxing and stuff like that, especially for me. Amen. Okay, so let's get started. Today, I want to go into the book of Luke. Amen. I want to study in Luke 6, 22, 23. And we're only going to be reading a little small part of Luke um, 6, 22. Amen. And I want to just study real quick with you guys what Jesus said. Amen. Jesus said, blessed are you when men hate you amen he says when they exclude you insult you and reject you and i'm sorry reject your name as evil because of the son of man okay that's the only part we're going to be reading amen this morning amen blessed are you when men hate you I know uh, to, this is a um okay this week I was actually at the I, I was going around Greensboro and while I was able to evangelize to a few ladies um we got into some interesting conversations um and you know I felt really really bad because I kind of felt like put on the spot because of other people now, I'm going through my own little things with the Lord and, you know, my own changes and my own things. But when I was talking to these ladies, they kept asking me so many questions. And it was a while since I had somebody, like, ask me, like, 99 questions on Christianity and things like that. So, um, you know, I sat there and tried to answer so many questions. And they were like, well, you know, should Christians do this? Should Christians do that? You know, I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that and... I I don't agree with this and why do people do that and there was just like so many questions that I was getting hit with that I had to just you know one one of the things that the Lord put in my heart is that you know it, it, it to believe in Christ is something that is individual okay we cannot force people to believe in Christ we cannot manipulate people to believe in Christ we cannot manipulate people to go to church we cannot you know um you know expect things to always be how we want them to be right so we have to to uh, come to terms right with accepting who we are because I go through struggles when I see certain things that I can't change right we all do you know we all want things we all want to be able to control certain things in our life but sometimes there are certain things that happen in our life that we're not going to be able to control and that is something that may be easy for some people and that may be something that's harder for some people good morning sweetie um you know for everyone is different okay but when we come to Christ, we're going to see that everybody has a different mindset and a different perspective. And we have to be careful to not go with the flow and go with the trend. And that, and that's something that the Lord has been working in my heart. We have to be all in one accord, but we have to be very careful to not be copycats. Okay. What do I mean by being a copycat? I mean that you shouldn't be, you know, looking at this person and looking at that person and wanting to copy them and imitate them as a person 
person that is close to Christ because you not, you may think that somebody just because they they may have a flourishing ministry just because they may have it going on you may think that they have it all put together but you don't know what's behind that you know you don't know what's behind like it's like everybody they say got skeletons in the closet we have to be very careful amen um when in our christian walk and where we're walking and we have to know who we are and when you know who you are you're not worried about everybody else but you're still gonna have those conflicts that are gonna come to you in this walk because if we weren't gonna have them jesus wouldn't have been able amen sweetie jesus wouldn't have um warned us and and told us this for no reason he didn't say you know what? Um, blessed are you when people love you. He said, blessed are you when people hate you. That means that when you take a stand, amen. Good morning, Liz. Um, when you take a stand, amen, to, to, to accept Christ, when you take a stand to say, you know what? I want to change my life around. You know what? I, I don't like these areas in my life and I want to like switch them around. When you take that stand and you're comfortable in your own skin and you know that you could look at yourself in the mirror and you know that you're not perfect you you shouldn't worry about other people that's pointing out your flaws and telling you that you're not perfect you already know it you know and when you are a believer in Christ, you become perfect in him. So when I say this morning for today's topic, don't let your enemies fool you. Your enemies may try to fool you on a day-to-day -day basis by pointing fingers at you, by always talking about you. But Jesus said this for a reason. He says, blessed are you when people hate you, when people don't like you for no reason, and they, or, or when people always looking at everything you do, or they're always trying to manipulate and make another person see you with different eyes or when people just constantly talking about you and you're not even on their mind and you worried about you and you focusing on your things the enemy will rise up and put a bunch of little trolls, a bunch of little haters in your life to not not so they could fool you, but so that you can learn how to grow and gain victory through Christ over them. Amen. God, I was re listening to a preaching this week where God, where somebody was preaching about us being thankful that we even have enemies and and not to exclude them out of our lives. Why? Because it is in the is in their face that God is going to prosper you. It's in in front of them that God wants to put a table before you and make an example of you in front of them because a lot of people you know when you have the the love of God in your heart you're not just gonna go around hating people when you have the love of God in your heart you're not just gonna go around and pointing fingers at people for no reason so these people are not led by God because when you have the Spirit of God in you you don't hate people you want people to prosper you want people to go from one level to the next level you want people to grow you want people you want to see people flourish you want to see people being used for the glory and the honor of God you want to see people you know be used by God to transform people's lives you want to see you know the the word manifested because we're not supposed to be Christians that you know just walk around always angry always throwing pity me parties and always like you know not excited about life and not excited about things like you that you know it's a choice happiness is a choice every day you know you have a choice to you know we got to clean i know us at me as a woman you know, a mom, you know, with three kids and, and having a, 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 a big house, I have to clean every day, but it's a choice. I can either let myself get, you know, I can let the enemy overtake me, you know, with like, you know, um, anger and, you know, just upset every day. Oh, I got to clean this house and I could go around screaming at everybody. I just cleaned this place. I am going to clean my house, house joyfully every day because it is my responsibility. It is is my choice. Good morning, Poochie. It is my choice to be happy every day. And when I'm cleaning my house, and it's a lot of people, even cooking, they may women may look at cooking like a burden, and it shouldn't be a burden. It's a choice. It's you, you know, you gotta love what you do. If you know that you gotta season me, like all right, we got 365 days a year, right? If you're gonna season me, let's just say 300 days and 65 days, you're gonna have takeout, right? It's a choice. Good morning, sweetie. It's a choice 
for us to do what we got to do with a joyful attitude, with a happy attitude. But it's up to us if we're going to let our enemies always manipulate our happiness, if we're going to let other people affect us. You got to be able to be that type of basketball player that just sits there on the sideline. There's people that are want that are watching you and want you. Good morning, sweetie. There are people that are watching you and just want you to fail. There are people that are just sitting back in the cut, just waiting for you to not prosper. There are people that may be angry with you and how you're always succeeding and how you're always, you know, God is going to continue to bless you. Good morning, sweetie. How God is always going to continue taking you to the next level. And we have to learn to overcome, okay, and not let what other people's, other people's opinions affect who we are. Because we know that as Christians, Jesus said, blessed are you when people, when men hate you. So you got to know that if you're, if you have people that are hating you, you are doing something good for the glory and the good morning, sweetheart. You, um, you are doing something right for the glory and the honor of God. You you can't worry about what this person, other people's opinions. You can't always worry about other people's thoughts of you because if you let other people's opinions and other people's thoughts of you, you're never going to make it to that place where God wants you to go. You have to be able to shine above the, your enemies. Believe me, I love shining above my enemies. Why? But I still pray for them. I'm not going to, you know, let them affect me. I'm not going to sit here and cry, you know, my eyes out because somebody doesn't like me. I'm just, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm a better Christian or not a Christian. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that if you don't like me, I have that attitude like stand in line, baby, with the rest of them because I'm not going to stop loving my husband and loving my house and loving my church and loving, you know, the people that God places in our lives. I'm not going to stop loving my children. I'm not going to stop loving the sun when it comes out. I'm not going to stop loving the rain when it comes out because other people don't like what, what, what I bring to the table. And that's what God wants you to understand this morning. Don't worry about other people. Like forget about all these other people. Forget about all these other people that just look at you and always got something to say. And he says, and, um, he says, blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you. What does that mean when they exclude you? When they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Maybe they have gatherings and they don't even want to invite you. Maybe every time they look at you, they just always got something to say. They're like, oh, you know what? I don't really want to hang out with that person, okay, or when they insult you, when they constantly looking at you and just you know, picking things. Oh, I don't like that. I don't believe that this person is a Christian because of that. Oh, I don't believe that you are a good Christian because of look at what you did. If I was you, I wouldn't have did this. Like those are like voices in our head that the enemy is constantly trying to bring into your, your head. And so that you can sit there and think to yourself, Oh my God, you know, maybe they are right. So that doubt could come in that, you know what, maybe God doesn't want to have anything to do with me. Maybe I'm not, you know, this Christian that, that, that I think I am. And God wants, you to always think the best of yourself always think highly of yourself never think of yourself as not being worthy because of other people's opinions. When we look at the Bible, we see so many people that were used by God and they had like so many flaws in them. And that's the beautiful thing about the Bible that no matter how many times people look at you and they get angry and they see all your flaws, God is still God could still use you. He could still use you to go to the next level because when when the power of God um works through you, it's not you that's doing the things. It's God through his power that is doing the things. And when people insult you, okay, and reject your name as evil because of the son of man. When people reject you just because you're a Christian, those are people you got to wait for God to bring the right people in your life. And you may go through a journey where you may say, you know what? I don't really understand why I see certain people come into my life. Why I see so many people come out of my life. God, why are you just, you know, moving my life around like a ping pong. God does that so that we can grow, amen, through the trial and through the tribulation so that we can become overcomers, so that we can continue, amen, good morning, sweetie, to move in God's grace. We're going to be able to continue to move forward. God loves it, man, when you go through trials and you go through tribulations and you just overcome. When you overcome obstacles after obstacle, you know, and certain challenges with certain people in your life, 
life, when you overcome challenges with your enemies, when you overcome spiritual, um, you know, challenges at church, when you overcome, you know, and your faith continues to grow when you, you know, your, your, the, the love that you have and the passion that you have for the work of God, when those things continue to grow, God is going to continue to just work in your life. Amen. And what does he give us to look forward to? He says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. God is going to reward you. He's going to, re he says, great is your reward. That's something that we have to look forward to. Even if you have men and women that may not love you on this earth, even though you may have men and women that are not there for you the way they're supposed to be there for you, even though you have failed and you're like, you know what, God, I failed. I'm such a sinner. I'm full with so much sin. I cannot go back to the church. I I cannot get my life together. I can't do what you're calling me to do. Rejoice. God gives more. Every day is a new opportunity as long as you come to him with a humble heart. God wants us to like, you know, he wants people to stop walking around like their stuff don't stink. He wants people to just, amen. He wants people to just walk around and no, you're not perfect. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, God, I'm not perfect. I recognize my flaws. I recognize my, my, you know, um, my weaknesses. Okay. But God, I still want to love you. I still want to give you my all. I still want you to um continue to work in me. That is what God wants. Don't listen to the voices of people saying, oh, well, you fell and I don't really see any more opportunity, you know, in your Christian walk because all I see is you keep failing and you keep making mistakes. God doesn't do that to us. So why are we going to keep listening to the voices of other people? Why? Because it's the enemy. He's always going to keep putting people, but the great is the reward. Lord, he says for us on that day. So what we need to do is just walk around, okay, rejoicing, amen. I love you, sweetheart. We need to walk around rejoicing, amen, in that day and leap for joy. That means that you got to walk around and like, you know what? People may not love me, but you know what? God loves me. You know, people may point fingers at me, but God is still rolling for me. You know, God is still going to roll those dices for you. And even though everybody else ex you out even though everybody else you know wipe their hands with you god is still gonna fight for you and that is something that we need to you know um be thankful for amen so I'm going to pray really quickly. I pray that this word this morning, amen, is a blessing to your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Father God, on this precious morning. A little bit late, Father God, but we here. Father God, we come before your presence just to say thank you this morning. Thank you for all the things that you're doing. Father God, thank you. We even thank you for all the problems and challenges that we all may be facing at this time. Father God, I know that we all have a bunch of enemies, you know, in our lives and a bunch of people that want to constantly insult us, hate us, reject us, um, you know, because of your name, Father God. But we pray this morning that your Holy Spirit may continue to give us strength, Father God, to continue to run this race. And Father God, may we keep in our hearts the prize that you have ahead of us, Father God, which is that crown, you know, that you're going to place on each and every one of our heads that day when we are face to face with you, Father God. And I just pray that whatever your will may be for each and every one of our lives. I pray that it may come to pass, Father God, and we remove, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, any obstacles, any demonic forces, Father God, that have been sent our way, um, you know, to not make us get to that destination place that you have for us, Father God. If there's any, um, you know, demonic forces trying to just, you know, bring depression or bring anxiety or bring, you know, doubt, Father God, we just rebuke all of those things in the name of Jesus, Father God, and we just ask you for your presence to come in and continue to encourage us so that we can grow for the glory and the honor of God. Amen. So I love you guys. May you guys have an awesome weekend. I don't know about you guys, but this is just another weekend where I got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Amen. But as long as you're doing it with joy, that's all that matters. Amen. So have a good weekend and I'll see you guys next week, Friday.